Do you see New Hampshire first in the nation primary as a crucial battlefield in your campaign? Kind of what are your thoughts on New Hampshire's place in the primary process? Of course, this is a great state. Uh, they, they have uh, a tradition of uh, promoting uh, individual liberty. And uh, I, I think if uh, we bomb here, uh, we're not worth our salt. And this, uh, this is for a field for us. And we have a lot of support. It's growing. We're very comfortable about what's happening. So, uh, uh, you know, so much different than four years ago. And we have better organization, we raise more money, and all these things. So, uh, in addition, we're just right. You were kind of Tea Party before Tea Party was cool. If you can let me say that. <laughs> You've been espousing these you know, views of liberty, personal freedom, small government for a long time now. You know, you've really been on record. Um, what's your view on the Tea Party movement? You know, do you think here in New Hampshire at the moment we're kind of having a lot of discussions at the state level about Tea Party versus establishment, et cetera? You know, what are your thoughts on the Tea Party movement's place? Well, in this obviously the Tea Party is uh, just a broad group of people who agree that there's something terribly wrong in Washington and they're not arguing that the government isn't big enough. They all argue it's too small. But it's a miscellaneous group. I mean, although it started in the last campaign with, with our campaign and things were more precise, I think because all of a sudden it invited a lot of people in who had the same uh, feeling of, uh, of uh, you, you know, disenchantment with Washington, it invites a lot of different viewpoints. So I think it's very natural that you're going to get a lot of different viewpoints. And, and the, the other thing it invites, when it's spontaneous, uh, it's one thing, but then people who are more, uh, you know, in organized, in the political parties, they see, oh, there's a bunch of people out there, I better go find out what it is. They all of a sudden jump in and they want to be the leaders of the Tea Party and capture that sentiment. But it's nothing bad, it's just that's the way it works, but it's very confusing. So uh, I think in most states, uh, there's a little bit of uh, competition going on. In some states, it's much stronger than others. But overall, I can see it very, very healthy because it's challenging the status quo. And the basic thrust of it is that the debt is a big problem, and uh, the government has outgrown itself. And that uh, statistics now show that m many more people than just the Tea Party say that the government doesn't have the authority to do what they're doing. So I think that's very healthy. Healthcare is going to be a big issue in this election. I think we kind of all, all agree on that. Now, you're a physician, and Texas had, you were your congressman from Texas. Texas has kind of been a leader in tort reform over the past, right. certainly in the past decade. Um, do you see first your role as a physician as kind of giving you a different perspective, a helpful perspective on the healthcare debate? And, you know, do you think that some of what you've done in Texas could be applied at a national level to, to really improve health care reform? Not, not exactly like Texas, because tort law, from my viewpoint, is a um, state issue. And the states, if if people look at Texas and think it's been successful, it sets an example that will draw in doctors. Texas is a state that generally draws business people in to draw in doctors. But other states could look at it and say, well, you know, it's a pretty good thing that they did. They should do it. And there are some things we can do at the national level, but uh, it, it has to be minimal, uh, maybe related only to those services provided uh, by the government itself, that would be one way of, of being able to do it. But I have uh, proposals where it would actually legalize contracts, which should be automatic, but it isn't. Legalize contracts between doctors and patients and allowing doctors to at least talk to each other. And, uh, attorneys and insurance companies and others can talk to each other to uh, represent one side, but doctors can't. So you, you could devise a system where uh, doctors actually, the market could help solve this. I mean, we don't have the same problem in, um, say, automobile insurance. We don't have to, uh, you know, every time there's an accident, we don't go to go to court. The two sides fight and fight and fight who was to blame and all that insurance companies uh, work it out. And in the car, the car insurance business, you... Uh, you have settlements, the attorneys aren't make, making all the money. The way it is set up now, the attorneys make all the money, it intimidates the doctors, and it is a huge cost of medicine. So most people don't sue. Just a few people do. But most people pay for the suits. Because I, I, I was in OB, 
then I had to carry a lot of insurance. And uh, but the people who would never conceive of suing are the ones who have to pay the fees because you can't you can't stay in practice unless you collect enough money to pay your insurance. I'm assuming you wouldn't mind getting rid of Obamacare too. I want to. I want to not only opt out of Obamacare. I want to allow young people, anybody. If they're willing to opt out of the system and not have to pay into the system, so yeah, opt out of Obamacare. But I've never quite understood why uh, uh, forcing people in Obamacare is a whole lot different than forcing people into Medicare. And you literally are. You know, there's there's been this attempt to invite competition in medicine with these medical savings accounts. But and so you get out, you get tax credits, and you take care of your own bills. I think it's a great idea. But when you're 65. You don't have the same rights to do this. So, yeah, you, the whole principle, when you have a mess like we have, and you can't wave a wand and get the government out of everything, you have to preserve the right of opting out, whether it's in, in the monetary system, whether it's in education. See, there are a lot of people who would like to close down competition with the public schools. No homeschooling, no private schooling. We've got to regulate and take care of these kids. But whether it's education or medicine or monetary system, there's ways you can opt out and you don't have to sort of just destroy what we have overnight and let, let the people decide what they want. And I think that uh, as conditions get worse, they will always look for a private option. And uh, that's what I think would be, should be the transition. Foreign policy. You had at the Iowa debate a big disagreement with uh, Senator Santorum about foreign policy. Now, your views are different from a lot of the kind of what you were talking about earlier, traditional Republican tradition, Bush era kind of views. You know, do you think that your thoughts are catching on now that we spent so much money yeah, on these Yeah, I think my disagreement is with a lot of the uh, old-fashioned Republican leadership, but not with the people. I mean, they're, they're just coming around, and, and two reasons. Uh, I wished it had only to do with the Constitution and, and, and the morality of war, which I think should guide us. But a lot of them are coming this way because they're tired, our troops are fatigued, we're running out of money, we didn't win the war, and enough is enough. I went through this experience when I was in the military in the 60s. They finally just ran out of steam. It was, we went to the war for the wrong reason. We didn't have the right goals. And that was an utter tragedy of the 60s. And this one is competing. Uh, it's probably more expensive already. It's, long, it's lasting longer. So uh, I think it's... Uh, uh, that, that issue is definitely coming our way, but it, it's the most powerful issue for a candidate to run in the general, because you can gather in a lot of progressives and Democrats and independents and keep the conservatives. But it is true what you say, it challenges, you know, the, the status quo type Republicans, but it, it doesn't hurt us, it just proves their status quo and they can't. They can't ever change their viewpoints and, and, and realize the mistakes that have been made.